What is that plant? It's oregano. Your gardener gave it to me. You're very popular. I just try to be myself. Whenever I try to be myself, people don't seem to like me very much. Fernando, you were originally, were you interested <clears throat> in both popes? Or you were interested <clears throat> more in one of them and the story took to took you to both? No, the, the, the project that was offered to me at first was a, a film, any film on Pope Francis. So my interest was really for Francis. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of him because of his encyclica, uh, Laudata Si. And then when they said, do you want to make a film on the Pope? I said, uh, yeah, let's explore the idea. And then two years later, they sent me a script in which Benedict was also part of. But I mean, it's a great script. Mm -hmm. He said, yes, of course. And which will you say was the biggest challenge to, to make this film happen? I think was making it uh, interesting or, or entertaining. Because if you read the script, it's really, uh, I mean, two guys talking about religions and, and ethics, and, and which could be very I mean, difficult. I mean, could be a very boring film, to be honest. Uh, there are some, some jokes, there was some jokes in the script, but uh, I mean, it could, could have been very, very difficult film, a film for a niche. And so my challenge was to make it uh, really more open. And the choice, how I approached that, was, was trying to make it very intimate, very personal. So I always thought that I was not making a film on, about a pope talking to a cardinal, but uh, about two men that disagree, talking and trying to find a common ground. And so that, that was, and, and so the camera, the lighting, the music, is, it's all very simple, very, to make it intimate, so the audience would engage. And I think it, it worked. I've struggled to do what must be done, but I've lost. Hopes can't resign. If you do this, you will damage the papacy forever. I can no longer sit on the chair of St. Peter. You're mistaken. You are serious. I cannot play this role anymore. The film that opened the doors of Hollywood for you uh, was with uh, non-professional actors. And here you had the most professional actors in the world. How was the experience of having these two giants of acting face to face? No, it's a joy to work with because, I mean, I really, I really use their creativities. I mean, more than telling them what to do, I was always uh, asking them, learning with them. So this scene, what would be the approach? And, you know, I was always uh, asking them to see how they they work, how is their process, and, and what they would bring to me. Actually, I do the same with all the crew. I, I usually don't ask things for, for my crew. I, 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 don't, I ask them what they think. I really use everybody's uh, input mm -hmm. a lot. And with the actors, uh, it wasn't different. The only thing that I, I always ask them is, as, well, as I was saying, was to make it very small. So sometimes I would ask them to play it again, to make it smaller, and, and, and throw away the lines. Like there's a moment when, when Pope Benedict resigns, and he's going to tell Bergoglio that, that he's, go, he's going to resign. If you read the script, that's a moment where he would, would be very dramatic. I will, I'm going to resign, and then it would stop. The music would, would be big. And I asked him to play like throwing it away, like he was saying nothing. I'm going to resign. Well, this marble is cold, and he walks out. Mm -hmm. So I was always trying to make it simple, make it, yeah. And, and I think this helped. I think the biggest challenge in this movie is to make us believe that Jonathan Price is Pope Francis, and I think you achieved that. Um, how tricky was to get his rhythm when he talks, to play with the language, to change his face to look more like uh, the Pope we all know? Well, well, he does. He does look like the Pope. If you Google, if you Google the Pope, you see him compared to, to Jonathan Price in several uh, images, and because. But uh, that's just the, the physical semblance. All the rest was really uh, Jonathan's talent. I mean, he watched a lot of, of uh, the Pope's footage to see how he walks, how he moves, how he feels. So uh, it, it was very instinctive. In some way, he, he became the Pope. He knew how to, how to 
to put the accent that the Pope would have, and, and uh, I didn't have to, to make much. This was really his work. When I'm talking about creativity, using the, the actor's uh, creativity, that's what I, what I meant. There's a saying, God always corrects one Pope by presenting the world with another Pope. I should quite like to see my correction. Cuando tenga la tierra, la tendrán los Reform que needs a politician. Los the most important qualification for any leader is not wanting to be leader. It's not me who needs to be satisfied. It's 1.2 billion believers. But that dubbing him in uh, Spanish was like a Challenge. No, oh, actually, like, actually, yeah. we, we he, there was there was a lot of Spanish for Pope Francis. Of course, he's Argentinian, but uh, Jonathan did his homework. So all the scenes in Spanish we shot in Spanish. He learned, and uh, he he had a very good coach, and he learned Spanish. We we shot in Spanish, and we cut the whole film to the end with his voice speaking Spanish. But then, of course, for, for South America or Spain, uh, nobody would buy a pope with a, uh, an English accent. So in the last minute, we just replaced his voice. But it was all spoken and cut in, in Jonathan's Spanish. He's, he has some, some very, he's, he's very good with languages. The Italian that we hear him speaking in the film is, is himself, his voice, as the Latin. Mm -hmm. Only the Spanish, I mean, it wouldn't, I mean, Argentinians wouldn't approve his little accent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, another uh, big uh, challenge was to find an Argentinian actor who can play uh, him, you know, uh, and be uh, at the same level of Jonathan Price. So can you talk about Juan Minujin and uh, why, why he would pick him? Yeah, we find that, that that was a big challenge for me because, uh, I mean, I didn't know much the... Uh, who, who the, the young Argentinian good actors were. So uh, I had to watch lots of films, and I spot uh, one, and, and, and he's an amazing actor. When we shot the film, he was a known actor in Argentina, very respected, but now after one year and a half, he's in, in a, a TV show, and, and now he became a big star in, in Argentina. And he, he might become a big star in the world because he's really, really consistent. If you watch his, uh, I mean, his different uh, shows, he changes, you know, this kind of actor that just digs into the character and uh, it's a joy to work with. Mm -hmm. And there's another Argentinian actor in the film who I also think it's amazing, called Lisandro. He plays uh, Father Jalex, that uh, is, is, is a priest that uh, was tortured because of uh, Cardinal Bergoglio. And he, this guy is, is really, I mean, he doesn't have much lines in the film, but the way he looks, the moment where everybody cries in the film is just because he, he stares at Bergoglio and says everything with his eyes. And in all the, all the screenings, that's when everybody blah, cries, just the way he looks. Mm -hmm. This guy is amazing, Lissandro. Do you, do you feel that you had like a, a better approach that any other Hollywood director, because you are from the region after all. I mean, you understand uh, Latin America in a way that uh, an, Ameri an American director wouldn't. Well, I, I'm, I'm inside, so I really can't tell if an American director wouldn't understand. But for sure, the whole thing, the, the whole uh, dirty war in, in, in Argentina, I'm much more aware than, than any other. I mean, of course, any director could research and, and, and then shoot. But I, I think I, I get the feeling, because in Brazil, it wasn't so brutal like in Argentina, but we had the same thing. So I, I grew up listening to stories on, on, on the dirty war and the dictatorship, and that now Brazilian president denies. The Brazilian president says that there was never had, we never had a dictatorship in Brazil. There was never torture in Brazil, which is crazy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, and finally, um, you are experienced with favelas. How was to take Jonathan Price to one in Argentina? Yeah, that they're, they're quite similar. Actually, the favela where we shot in Argentina is, I think, is, is better than the favelas where we shot in, in where I shot in Brazil, because it's uh, it's Villa 31. It's in in downtown. It's really like two kilometers from from downtown, from the Casa Rosada. Uh, and so it's 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 urbanized. I mean, the streets are, are there's, there's sanitation. There's 
Of course, there's a lot of house, a lot of people live there, but uh, the conditions are better than, than the favelas in, in Brazil. I'm sure that there are some other uh, favelas far, far away from downtown that would be more compared to Brazil, but that one was quite, and we were very protected and, and very well received. It was a very pleasant shoot. Oh.